Hi everyone, welcome to the Basic Science Series by Dr. Lokendra Kumar. I have created this program to promote scientific knowledge among students and young researchers. In this episode, we will discuss in detail about detection and treatment of MRSA infections. To know basic concepts about MRSA, please refer to the episode 19. MRSA is a type of Staphylococcus aureus bacterial infection that has become resistant to many of the antibiotics used against this bacteria. MRSA infections are categorized into two basic types, hospital acquired MRSA infections or hospital care associated MRSA infections and community acquired MRSA infections or commonly known as CAMRSA infections. Most MRSA infections occur in people who have been in hospitals or other healthcare settings such as nursing homes and dialysis centers. When it occurs in these settings, it is known as healthcare associated MRSA or HAMRSA infection. Another type of MRSA infection that has occurred in a wider community among healthy people is known as community acquired MRSA infection or community associated MRSA infection. It is spread by skin to skin contact. At risk populations include groups such as high school wrestlers, child care workers, and people who live in a crowded conditions. All right. Let's start discussing about detection of MRSA infections. When patient is feeling high fever with a delayed wound healing, that could be the first sign of MRSA infection. Patient should immediately contact a certified physician for the better diagnosis of the infection. First stage will be the sample collection. The sample will be collected from the affected area. Since MRSA infection is mostly wound infection and in that case, wound swab of the affected area is the right sample. In case of respiratory staph infection, nasal swab will be acquired or sputum sample can be taken. In bloodstream infection, the sample will be the blood sample. The sample should be acquired by a trained physician so that the contamination of the sample is avoided. Now, the sample is shipped to the microbiology laboratory for further processing. Swabs will be incubated in nutrient-rich media for a couple of hours so that the amount of bacteria is increased. The further processing can vary from lab to lab and on the basis of facilities and equipment. Let's first discuss about the basic technique used in microbiology lab for the detection of staph infections. Later, we can discuss advanced detection technologies that are developed to detect MRSA infection in a very short period of time. Basic traditional microbiology techniques include gram staining, selective media approach, biochemical assay in combination with antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Gram staining of the sample will be performed to check if there is gram-positive round-shaped grape-like structure under the microscope. If yes, then we can say that the initial diagnosis for Staphylococcus aureus has been confirmed. To know in detail about the gram staining, please refer to the episode 16. Further, sample will be plated on selective media for Staphylococcus aureus. Manitoul salt agar or MSA is a commonly used selective as well as a differential growth medium in microbiology for the growth of Staphylococcus aureus. It encourages the growth of a group of certain bacteria while inhibits the growth of other bacteria. This medium is important in medical laboratories as one method of distinguishing pathogenic microbes in a very short period of time. It contains a high concentration about 7.5% to 10% of salt which is sodium chloride, making it selective for gram-positive bacteria which is Staphylococcus and Micrococcus. 
since this level of salt is inhibitory to most of the gram negative bacteria. It is also a differential media for mannitol fermenting staphylococci containing carbohydrate mannitol and the indicator phenol red, a pH indicator for detecting acid production by mannitol fermenting staphylococci. Staphylococcus aureus produces yellow colonies with yellow zones, whereas the coagulase negative staphylococci produce small pink or red colonies with no change in the color of the medium. Further, using the help of biochemical assays, the bacterial genus and species is confirmed. Staphylococcus aureus is DNA positive, mannitol positive, and it causes alpha hemolysis. It is coagulase positive. Rest of the biochemical assay results you can see on the screen of your computer. In future, I'll make presentation on these selected tests and explain the science behind these tests. So please stay tuned and subscribe the YouTube channel so that you get all the information about the presentation immediately. Alright, further confirmation is done by antimicrobial susceptibility testing. AST is performed and the resistance of the bacteria against methicillin antibiotic is confirmed. AST can also tell us about the other antibiotics that can kill the MRSA infection and that will be very helpful for the physicians to prescribe the treatment for the patients. Another method to detect the MRSA infection is PCR of MEK-A gene. PCR means polymerase chain reaction. It is a technique used in molecular biology that can detect and identify the bacteria by their DNA. So if you have facility, you can directly do the PCR of your sample and look for that particular gene. The MEK-A gene is a gene found in bacterial cells which allows bacterium to be resistant to antibiotics such as methicillin, penicillin and other penicillin-like antibiotics. There are monoclonal antibodies based detection of MRSA infections, where monoclonal antibodies are produced against the MRSA surface proteins and then antibodies binds to bacteria and provides signals for the presence of the bacteria. Please watch episode 7 to know more about monoclonal antibodies. Another interesting technique is through bacteriophage based technique to detect MRSA infection. Bacteriophage cocktails can be used to kill the bacteria and increase in bacteriophage population can represent the indirect identification of presence of Staphylococcus aureus. To know in detail about bacteriophages, please refer to the presentation number 3. So after doing some online research on MRSA infection, I found a couple of papers and a couple of articles showing that these are the antibiotics that can be used against MRSA infections. They have shown some promises in vitro as well as in vivo against MRSA strains. Effective antibiotics against MRSA infections include vancomycin, carbapenem, levofloxacin, temafloxacin, sparfloxacin, cotrimoxazole, rifampicin, arbicacin, streptogramins, and virginiamycin show excellent activity in vitro and in vivo against MRSA and considered as a real future potential alternative agents to vancomycin. Alzelic acid and ramoplanin shows future potential as agents against MRSA infections for topical uses. Alright, let's discuss the very important topic that is how to prevent MRSA infections. Ways to prevent MRSA infections include first regularly wash your hands, second keep injury covered, third keep personal items personal, fourth regularly shower after athletic games or sports practices, fifth do not inject illicit drugs. With this note 
I conclude this presentation. Please like and share the video with students and young researchers. Please subscribe my YouTube channel to get updates on new presentations on basic science topics. Please 